Hi, this is Pat Grady from Embellishing Bliss. Welcome to week two of Navigate the Journey. I hope this last week you were able to spend just a little bit of time on your intention. That you were able to focus and not have a huge intention, but something that is a little bit more manageable, something that you can actually attain. Besides your intention, I also hope that you were willing to figure out what it is you want to pair your creative practice with. One of you said that you were going to um, come home from working out at the gym and you have a half hour, 11.30 to 12, before you eat lunch. I think that that's an amazing pairing. First you're working on your body, then you work on your mind. It doesn't get any better than that. What a, what a good combination. And then where are you going to do this? If the only place you can find happens to be in your dark basement, you might want to consider putting a light in there or adding some pillows or candles, something to make it inviting. Because you're going to want to spend some time this week because we are actually going to get into your visual journal this week. You get to write in it. Last week all was all about anticipating it. This week you're actually going to do it. Our topic for this week is release. The word release has special meaning to me because it happens to be the word that I have chosen for 2013. It's a word that I'm really going to focus on and trying to release some things in my life. Um, for example, uh, I went into the and looked at the definition again, went to Google, searched relief, and what I came up with, what the first definition was to set free from confinement restraint or bondage. And when I was thinking about that, I'm sure they were probably thinking about prison. They were probably thinking about someone being released from prison, but in all reality, we can sort of put our own self in a prison. Um, for example, let's say that you're living in a home and you're not really loving it, but you're not willing to release it. But what if you said, you know what, I am willing to leave this home. You might then find a home that's even better than what you had originally and it was so amazing. But if you held yourself to the home that you were in, you could have never experienced this which will be so much better. The second one is to free from something that binds, fastens, or holds back. To let go. When I read that definition, what pops into my head is the vision of a balloon. You know, a helium balloon that has a string tied to it. And when you were a little kid or you had little kids, you'd tie the string around their wrists so that the balloon didn't get away from them or, or fly off into the ceiling fan or something like that. But think about um, your life and the idea that if you were willing to let it go, how far could you go? What could you accomplish? Just like letting the balloon go, it goes up, 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 even further than you ever anticipated. So by releasing or letting go, you can, you can accomplish more things than what you had originally planned. Um, the, the third one is to relieve of debt or obligation. And I know a lot of times we feel very obligated. We feel like we have to do it all. Um, I think especially women feel like we need to be Wonder Woman. We need to work, we need to cook, we need to clean, we need to do whatever it is that we have to do. Well, this week I have released um, the obligation that I am going to cook dinner every night. You know, I've told my family, guess what, guys? We're going to share this responsibility. And I have to tell you, it feels wonderful to know that I'm not the only one that's going to prepare dinner. You know, I'll still probably do it three or four nights a week, but to know that somebody else is going to be responsible the other few nights makes it a whole lot easier and more enjoyable for me. And besides, then they get to try to figure out what everybody wants to eat. That's not my job at all you know, completely anymore. Um, so why would we have release for the second week? Well, I wanted you or to help you to find time to work in your visual journal, um, to make room for new things and new opportunities. I'll give you an example of something else over the last two weeks that I've been releasing. I don't know about you, but I tend over the last three or four years to have signed up for a lot of things on email. Things from people, you know, maybe they were teaching me how to use social media, how to, to um, 
expand my my list of people that I want to contact, uh, maybe how to speak in front of crowds. I mean, all sorts of great things to know, but after a while, it just keeps piling up in my inbox. And it seems like every morning when I turn on my computer and look at the my emails, I am completely overwhelmed and bombarded, and I don't open up most of them. I would say three-fourths of them. So the last two weeks, I've really been working on unsubscribing from email from people that I really don't care about or care to learn from them, at least at this point in my life. And I have to tell you, it is a little bit of a pain to go in and unsubscribe and type in your email address and then get another email back that says you have unsubscribed. But now that I've gotten through the process, it feels wonderful to come in and really only see the emails from the people that I actually want to hear from. So it might be a little work. I'm not saying releasing is always easy, but I think it is worth the effort that there are some benefits at the end of the day. So hopefully by releasing this week, you will find more time for your visual journal. So now, are you ready that we're actually going to start writing in our journal this week? Now, just like last week, there are a lot of things. Everything is typed out on your handout. Um, in the visual journal, the first thing that might be an issue for you is confronting this blank page. You look at that, and it is pretty scary. I have to admit, you're thinking, oh my, this has to be perfect. If I'm going to write it in a hardbound book like this, whatever I have to say has to be really important. Um, but you know what? It doesn't have to be. It has to be whatever you want it to be. Um, and keep in mind, the act of creating something new makes us vulnerable. I want you to think about that just a minute, and I'm going to say it again. The act of creating something new makes us vulnerable. And we create things that are new all the time, and no matter how many times we do it, we're still vulnerable. It's, it's a little bit scary. But um, just realizing that makes it a, a bit easier. The other thing I want you to remember is um, our first guideline. Remember the guideline where we use the word journeys as kind of the, um, the first letter of each of our guidelines? And the J was judgment is not allowed. I want you to keep that in mind so that if you're writing in your journal and you use a certain mark and you're like, oh, I don't really love that color or I wanted to write at an angle and I wrote straight and, you know, and I want to start over and rip that page out. Don't do it. Judgment is not allowed. It is what it is and it's fine. Whatever you did, it's okay. Just be good with it. Um, because remember, this journal is not about art. It's not about creating a masterpiece that's going to end up in some museum. This is about taking an inner journey. And I want you to feel comfortable with it. And that um, it is going to be a, something that's fun. It's a place for you to practice and to really get um, acquainted with yourself. Okay, so now let's talk about the journal itself. Um, this journal, you can probably see, I'm about halfway through it. It's one that I started on my birthday in September but I still haven't written on this inside front cover and this first page. I tend to work in spreads in my journal, and um, you may want to put your name and contact information on the inside cover if you're going to be taking your journal out and you're afraid that you might leave it somewhere so that it, it finds its way back to you. Um, but I tend to like to write in this front spread a little bit about the journal and what I learned from it and that sort of thing. So I leave this blank um, maybe till I'm about halfway through or even further when I feel like I have something to say here. So then you may want to start um, on the next spread. Now of course I've already got something here. But so your spread's just going to look like this. It's going to be blank. And what I want you to do is at the top of the page or wherever you want to on the page, but use a whole spread. I want you to write, I intend to. This is where you're going to write in your journal what your intention is. Um, it's no longer just in your head. It's down on paper. It is your commitment to do what it is that you intend to do. 
And again, you can use just your regular pen, you can use a marker, you can do this in any way you want to. But write down your intention, and then below that, you may want to write your thought process. Um, how did you determine this intention? What went through your head? Maybe other things that you considered and how you arrived at what you did. And then um, where are you going to practice and when? Just kind of document what you went through last week so that you have that here. One real key important thing is to make sure that you put a date on the page. You might say, oh, I'll remember when it was, but trust me, you won't. Um, you need to put the month, the day, and also the year, because now that I'm going into three years in my journal, or the third calendar year, um, you need to write the years so that you remember when you did it, because we will be going back through these pages as part of this course. You can leave this page blank if you want to. Next week we're going to be adding color and other things from magazines and you may want to kind of use pictures to describe your intention. So you can leave it blank um, and come back to it later. You don't have to complete a page when you're there. It doesn't have to be finished. You can always go back in. I go back in and kind of add things to pages all the time. So um, that's what we're going to do first, is your intention. Then you may want to start a new spread, and on that, and uh, again, all of this is in your handout, we're going to be doing a prompt for the week. So I'm going to give you a prompt, and the prompt for this week is, today I am willing to release. So you're going to just use a marker or whatever, put that up there and then I want you to find like an egg timer or uh, an alarm on your your phone whatever works for you maybe it's one of those little um, little things that you flip over that look kinda like an hourglass so you know when you've brushed your teeth for two minutes and I want you to time yourself for two minutes and once you write your prompt today I am willing to release then you're gonna start the timer and you're going to write everything that comes into your head. Today I am willing to release, and I might say email subscriptions that I no longer read. Um, it might be my anger. It might be um, my breath or the tension in my job. Who knows? Just whatever comes to your head. But the key thing is to make sure that your pen keeps moving so that as you're writing and you're still within your two minutes and you run out of ideas, then rewrite the prompt. Write again, today I am willing to release. Today I am willing to release until you can think of something else. When the two minutes is up, you're done. So then if you want... Um, you know next week that you can add maybe some more to those pages later maybe you do um, one day on one side like this and you do the next day here because we're going to use the same prompt every day this week and you might say well I got everything out I needed to say on the first day but realistically you didn't um, you can dig deeper. The first day you're just getting the tips of the ways and every day you'll find that there are more and more things that you weren't aware of that you are willing to release. So do this as many days as you can. Again, I'm only asking for a commitment of two minutes a day. Hopefully you can find those two minutes to write in your journal. Then at the end of the week you're going to do what I call reclamation. Some people call it harvesting or takeaway. Basically what it is, is you're going to read back over what you wrote for the entire week. And then I have some statements that I've given you in your handout that you can put in your journal. For example, the first statement is, my creative practice experience this week was dot dot dot. So if you want to write that in a marker and then handwrite your answer or print it out on the computer and glue it into um, your book, whatever works for you. But there are oh, maybe six or seven different uh, statements that you're going to answer. Typically, I do my reclamation on Sunday. You know, I start my week on Monday, and then by Sunday is sort of my day to relax and kind of make sure I've got everything together. And it's kind of fun to go back over the week and really look at, 
what have I accomplished? What did I learn? What do I want to do next week? It's sort of like wrapping up the week and preparing for next. Then next week, um, I will give you a different prompt. Somehow the prompts make it less intimidating to get into your journal. You have something to write about. You don't have to come up with something just right out of your head. I'm giving you a little nudge to help you to, to at least start with something. Then um, next week I will be showing you actually how to apply paint, um, how to get some magazine pages into your journal. So we'll be getting a little bit of that piece, but I didn't want to give you that too quickly. I want to take this in baby steps so that it is something that you can accomplish, again, that it's not too overwhelming. Um, last week, I, so if you haven't already gotten um, paints and markers and that sort of thing, you'll be wanting to get them this week in preparation for next week. And I talked about um, resource materials, magazine articles, things that you're going to get. Um, and I want to tell you just a, a quick couple of things about the containers. Um, you may want to get something like this to put your magazines in. Uh, you can actually put pages that you tear out of magazines in here or uh, colored copy paper that you're going to use. Whatever works for you can go in into um, those magazine holders. You might want to get, this is just a plastic container with a lid, you know, thin that again you can keep markers, paints, and those sorts of things in it. The other option is this is just a cardboard box that I got when somebody was going out of business. I think they used it for mailing or something where I keep my different scraps of paper and um, other materials that I want to use in my journal. You could do something as simple as a shoe box like this that has a lid that's attached um, you know, whether you leave it just as it is or you want to paint on it or put contact paper. And another option might be one of those rolling carts that have little drawers in them and maybe each drawer is for something different. One is for paints, another for markers, tear out sheets that you have, magazines in the bottom. And uh, the last thing that I think will work for some people, I don't happen to use this method, but to have a ring binder. And inside the ring binder have sheet protectors that you could categorize the things that you pull out of magazines. Maybe you put nature things in one, or things that are yellow in another, or um, words that have to do with something in another sheet protector. And that way you can just flip through it and easily find the things that you want to. There are many ways to organize, but I recommend that you find some way to kind of keep everything um, collected so that it's easier for you when you work in your journal that you don't have to go searching for things. It's all really right at your fingertips. The last thing I want to talk about is um, in your packet this week is uh, a poem that's called The Journey by Mary Oliver. And I ran across it this week in a blog that someone sent me that I actually didn't unsubscribe to. And I found that it was a, a poem that is very appropriate for what we're going through right now. I did also have a link um, in this that uh, on YouTube I found the, the poem where someone had added photography and music to along with the words and it made it even more visual and uh, I felt more inspiring so you may want to check that out again a link on this uh, paper and the very last thing is our conference call this week and I am so sorry about the mix-up last week where I gave you the wrong phone number but the phone number I used didn't allow me to record the call and that was an important piece of it so um, I hope that none of you were waiting on the wrong number um, and this week, our conference call, instead of being on Friday, is going to be on Thursday. The correct phone number is in your handout along with your access code. And again, it is from noon to one on um, Thursday. And that is um, noon to one central time. So I think that I've given you some things to get ready for this week. I hope that it is a great week for you and that you continue with me as we navigate this journey and have a great week. I'll see you next week. Bye now.